Hi, this is Matt Shuckman, editor of MuddyRiverSports.com, and joining me is Quincy University Athletic Director, Josh Raby. How's that sound? Different. Um, thanks for having me on. <laughs> Are you getting used to that, that, that moniker now? No, not yet. <laughs> um, last week we did the GLVC AD meetings, right. and it was, uh, it was a little different. Uh, yeah. A little, little different clientele than I'm used to. Uh, nothing bad. It was just uh, you know, inter- introducing yourself as athletic director and hearing, you know, everybody's other title. You got yeah. director of, of athletics. You got vice president of athletics and recreation, vice president of general athletics. You know, it's funny. Everybody has their certain title. You're right. Um, I guess I just go by athletic director. <laughs> so were you the first pick in the athletic director, senior women's administrator softball game? I Well, the teams were divided up. And a little-known fact, um, I, since I quit playing, I have not played anything. Not a pickup basketball game, not a softball game, nothing. Uh, I was afraid I was going to hurt myself. And Other so, than playing with your kids. And yeah, you know, that's yeah. not it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all-time pitcher during – you know, right. all little league events, but I actually played in this game. Okay, and uh, I didn't hurt myself. That's got, good. Got a couple hits. Uh, I actually played shortstop for a little while. Okay, uh, threw a couple people out at first. Um, yeah, but no, no injuries. No injuries. That's the main thing. I was good. That's good. good. That's good. Well, obviously, we're getting prepared for a new school year. Athletes will start coming to campus at the end of this week. Um, your first full year as athletic director, non-COVID year, hopefully, we'll see how that plays out. Um, what are you excited about as, as you move forward? Um, non-COVID-ish year, I want to correct you right there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. what, what am I excited about? I think, I think I'm excited to um, view QU athletic events through a different lens. Um, obviously starting off with football, they return on Sunday, probably right. start on Monday or Tuesday, but, uh, going to those games instead of as like a fan, I'm also going to be a fan. I'm always a fan of QE athletics, but just, just looking at it as a, as a, as somebody that kind of oversees it, you know, how are we doing? What are we, what are we doing to, to navigate the league? Uh, you know, and, Hopefully, I learned a little bit more about soccer. Uh, my daughter's involved in Quincy United now, so instead of just you know, maybe I'll ask a few more questions of the coaching staff, like what what's going on here? Why, why is everybody just following the ball? You know, like my daughter's game. But no, I'm I'm excited to to help help the department grow. Um, you know, not only uh, in student athlete experience, but wins. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's going to be paramount. I think two months in officially. Obviously announced in January, and you were working with Phil Conover while he served in the interim role to to get prepared for this. How much have you learned in such a short span? Um, I've learned I have to be extremely organized. Um, I I would be lying to you right now if I told you that. Yeah, man, I have found my stride and I have figured this thing out. No, um, uh, I have learned that I have a notebook. And it is like my Bible, and it comes with me. It's sitting in my truck. I'm a little sweaty right now because it's not by my side. No, just kidding. But um, everything goes into there, to-do lists, you know, notes from meetings, stuff like that. Uh, my circle back around. Um, it's It's been good. It's been an adjustment. I'm sure. Um, not uh, recruiting, you know, and, and doing that whole circuit over the summer. But uh, it's been good. Um, but – you know, the learning experience isn't going to probably stop for right. some time. What's the most encouraging thing right now when it comes to QU athletics? Um, I think that our facilities, as where they stand in the Great Lakes Valley Conference, are in the top half. Uh, I would agree with that. When, when you have that, uh, you have a place to recruit to. When you have a place to recruit to, you can build mm-hmm. a roster that can be competitive, uh, and you can you can navigate the conference and and you know finish where you need to finish and advance to a postseason. What's it going to take outside of facilities to get QU 
I don't want to say on an even playing field because you have success in, in certain sports and Correct. have enjoyed success. But obviously I know the state schools have more money. They have more resources. How do you get QU on the same level, so to speak? Well, I think uh, no matter where you're at, there are problems. Okay? So say I was the basketball coach. Well, you know, I look at somebody that has a nice shiny arena. Well, I wish, you know, it was easy for them. But then they look at it through a lens. Well, I wish I was Northern Kentucky. You know, it has that 16. Well, Northern Kentucky looks at it like, man, I wish I was Louisville. And Louisville looks at it as like, man, I wish I was Kentucky. And Kentucky looks at it like, man, Kansas has it pretty good. Sorry, Chuck. But, you know, <laughs> like in, in North Carolina, I won't bring Kansas up. I'll go North Carolina, Duke, right. you know. It is about managing what you have. It is about managing your problem and turning it into a positive, in, in my view. Uh, like that. And, and either you're going to worry about what you don't have or you're going to sell what you do have. And then when you sell what you do have, you improve what you have, and then you can get better, better 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 in terms of of student athletes mm -hmm. and then the wins and losses take care of themselves correct me if i'm wrong we talked about facilities you have facilities mm -hmm. one of the other major selling points you have is people you have a good coach you have good coaches good assistant coaches good people around your programs as a selling point don't you i believe so um we have a department full of people that, that care about the university. Um, you know, the old saying, be where your feet are. Um, yeah. They do. They do. They, they care about the university, and it's all about, as of now, you know, it's about focusing on what we have mm -hmm. and being able to, to sell. You know, and, and, and I always heard this a long time ago, and it, and it, and it made a total sense. Uh, good coaches are recruiters. Great coach, coaches are recruiters and developers, and the best are fundraisers, recruiters, and developers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and yeah. and all three of those are learned traits. Right, they are. It isn't like you know you were born. You're like, hey man, I'm recruiter, developer, and a and a <laughs> and a fundraiser. No, but I think you know if if we keep working on our craft, keep working on our trade, everything else will take care of itself. What concerns you right now? About QU athletics, I don't have like two overarching concerns. Um, you know, I I think I think one of the I wouldn't necessarily say a concern, but you know, just kind of where we're currently at. Mm -hmm. You know, in in regards to the league, but you got to start somewhere. Right, got to start somewhere, and and wins and losses and everything that concerning college athletics is cyclical. You know, there was a time 10 years ago where Alabama football wasn't in the mix. That's why Nick Saban came. Yep. You know, and everything's cyclical. Everything goes up or down. Um, yes, we, you know, haven't had much luck, you know, in, in certain things, but it'll, it'll swing back around. Yeah. All right? It, it will. You mentioned facilities earlier. Obviously, some really nice facilities on this campus. What's next? What, what needs addressed to make improvements to? I think we're going to make a 75,000-seat stadium over our – Sweet. No, no, just kidding. All right. Um, the Matt Shuckman press box? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> After I win the lottery. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, there was days I was out in left field standing in water because it doesn't drain. <laughs> just saying, man, man, if we just had some roof. Never thought I'd <laughs> yearn for the – old metrodome but uh, no <laughs> what's next um you know there's always little things mm -hmm. that going on um the with in regards to like football uh we've we've sold uh a, a suite in the fourth floor this year okay and so um you know i think coach bass has done a tremendous job um marketing his program <laughs> to to the alums and yep. you know they were picked last. Yeah. Uh, but he's got a few kids this summer that are 
going to help out offensively on that side of the ball. They had trouble scoring in the spring. They played two games. Um, Against two good teams. Two good teams. Um, I would be shocked if we finished last in the league. I would, too. And, and I think I understand the prediction. Yeah, absolutely. And he and I talked about it over the weekend. Yeah. You know, you go on two and you score eight points in those two games. Yeah. Yeah, people are going to doubt you. Correct. Correct. And, look, uh, they had a couple injuries. They didn't play a couple guys offensively. I know it was a pseudo-conference slate. Linwood didn't it play. Was, I, it I was bizarre. I, I don't even know what happened. But they're going to be okay. You know, if if we can get to above 500 this year, you know, and I hate putting numbers, uh, but they've got some winnable games out there, mm-hmm. uh, and he knows it. And we've talked about it extensively, and all of a sudden they got some momentum. Yeah, going into the next recruiting cycle, building on some mm-hmm. of the some of the younger talent he has, I think they're on the rise. If you look at his first three years, three wins, four wins, five wins. The progression was there. Yeah. Throw last year out of, out the window. That was just a whole messed up scenario. Yeah, exactly. On so many levels. Correct. Not just football, but I mean, so many sports were had to deal. You don't have that hanging over you per se. I know there's still concerns about COVID and the yeah. Delta variant and everything, but football, soccer, volleyball are starting when they're supposed to be starting. Correct. There is it a breath of fresh air to know you're going into a school year quote-unquote, the way it's supposed to be? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. figured. I mean. Um, you know, we, we got kids coming back to campus. They're going to play a season, hopefully with minimal hiccups. Yeah. Minimal stoppages. Uh, just take football, for example. They were going to play in the fall last year. I don't even know if they practiced last fall. Once they would get able to, something would shake loose. Right. And then, you know, they couldn't. And, and – Sports are about rhythm. Sports are about consistency, and it's hard to be find a rhythm or be consistent when you're not doing it daily. Yeah, and uh, I'm not saying we were the only ones in the country dealing with that. We were not, right. but it's not an excuse. It's just the way it is, yep. and we're going into a into a a fall season. Um, you know, women's volleyball. I'm excited about women's volleyball. They, sh- they, they have a chance to be really special. They do. They do. They finished, what, top four or five in the league yep. last year. Uh, pretty much everybody's coming back. Right. Uh, Mark Jones has done a tremendous job with that program that hasn't had very much success traditionally. Well, and you got two soccer teams that both made it to the semifinals of the GLVC tournament. They return everybody. And they return everybody. You know, and, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, Sam Thomas, Mike Carpenter – um, they both do a good job. This is this is <laughs> Sam's been here. I think this is like year four. <laughs> no, just kidding. I think three, but he's never played in the fall. I know, you know? <laughs> and so he's uh, he's excited. Uh, he is. Uh, if you've uh, ever met Samuel Thomas, he is instant energy. Yes, indeed. Uh, but uh, he's fired up about his group. You know, he brought a couple couple uh, newcomers in that he's excited about. Yeah. Um, you know, Carp. He's, he's excited about his his crew. Um, I don't know where they're going to be picked, not that it matters. I no. told somebody the other day, they're like, you know, are you concerned about the football team being picked last? And I'm like, well, we pick, we were picked first every year in baseball, and we didn't always <laughs> finish first. So right. a lot of times it's a popularity contest, so it doesn't really matter. But, but you no, know, I mean, we've got four sports kicking off that hopefully, you know, all have, all have a lot of success. Who has more energy, Sam Thomas or Casey Bailey? Ooh, that's tough. It is, isn't Casey's it? Casey's got a lot. Yes, she does. Energy. So my daughter actually went to her basketball camp, the little kids' oh, camp, yeah. this summer. And, uh, yeah, she was like, you know, Coach Bailey has a lot of energy. <laughs> I, like, I know. Yes. I know. No, she's uh, she's hit the ground running, too. She's signed three or four new players. Right. And, and uh, I, think, I think people in this area are going to be excited to watch that team play. You know, and, and they're going to get up and down the floor. and It's going to be different. It's going to be a lot different. It's going to be a lot different. It is. Um, speaking of different, you have an addition coming in another year in sprint football. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've, there's been some sports added in recent years, lacrosse, bowling, 
now Sprint Football. Yeah. Do you like the way the athletic department is growing? Yeah. Um, if you look across the college landscape, the private schools are growing athletics. Yeah. Um, you know, we we were, I would say, middle on the additions of lacrosse. You know, we weren't first at the table. We certainly aren't last. We were kind of in the middle. Yep. Uh, we're definitely first on the sprint football bit. Yep. Uh, I think this is going to be an excellent addition to our to our um, athletic department because it's going to I it's going to add a local flavor uh, versus a national flavor of a lot of our sports. <laughs> um, that way, you know, when 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 local people see names via media, social media, you know, they're going to recognize some of those, some of those names. And hopefully that creates a lot of buzz. It creates a lot of uh, interest in that program. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The, the fact that people don't know much about it around here, I've had people question me constantly. And I'm like, look, it's still football. Still football. It's just it has a weight limit, a, a lower weight limit. Yeah, you know, it's not like the YMCA football days where anybody over 125 pounds got a red stripe on their helmet. No, no, you just have to weigh in under 180 or 182 or whatever that we're going to set the weight at. Right. Um, you know, I said it during the press conference. You wouldn't ask a 150 pound wrestler to get in with a 225 guy. Right. Um. It's actually a genius concept. Every the the, the playing field is is yeah. equal. Um, no, I've I when we were when we were rolling this out and, and researching and everything, I had watched a lot of YouTube videos, and mm -hmm. it's interesting. You'll see a defensive lineman just take off down the field and chase down the slot guy on right. a twenty five yard sound field, which you never see. And if they do, it's circled about six times on the telestrator. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> Yeah, the Damakong Sue run down. Yeah, you know, it takes a freak. It takes a freak to do that, but it's kind of an everyday occurrence in sprint football. Yeah. But uh, again, it is a normal football game, just with yeah. a weight limit. There you go. It'll be fun. It will. I, there's a lot to look forward to in this upcoming year at QU, and I know you're going to have some adjustments and some some challenges and some some days where you just sit there and smile as well. But it should be fun. It should be fun. It's a it's a new challenge. It's a I get to dress a little bit different daily. <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's it's uh, it's exciting. There's days that I'm staring at the wall saying, okay, um, you really did this, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, and there's some days where, you know, all of a sudden 5 o'clock rolls around. I'm like, what happened? Like, I just yeah. never sat down. But uh, I know the feeling. Yeah, exactly. New career. Yeah. New job. Crazy. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming and sitting down with me. I really look forward to the upcoming year and, and doing this more. Absolutely. Thanks for having me down, and go Hawks.